Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Move Forward Anyway podcast, featuring dream accelerating inspiration. I'm Jeff Meyer, your host, author, entrepreneur, and coach. My goal with this podcast is to help you identify and clarify your own dream by taking wisdom from others' successes and challenges. If you're looking to take action on your dream, to make a difference doing something you love, but your fears are holding you back, then this podcast is for you. If you're interested in finding additional support, you can also check out my Dream Accelerator coaching program, designed to help realize your full potential and reshape your future. As always, you can learn more about my Dream Accelerator program at jeffmeyer.org. Using my Dream Accelerating formula, heart-centered entrepreneurs can focus on their dream, name their fears, change their mindset, define their next, and move forward anyway. Well, good day, fellow dreamers. Thank you uh, for jumping in again on another episode of Move Forward Anyway. I love this podcast because I get to talk to some awesome people and just hear about their story of their entrepreneurial ventures and where they're at in the journey and the struggles and the joys of it. And today I am ecstatic to be talking to both Micah and Emily Powers uh, because this is, even though it's a lot of Micah's work, uh, this is a team effort, and I think it's really cool to talk to entrepreneurs and begin to understand that when you have like uh, a partner, you have a husband or wife that's in this with you, they're in it with you, even though they might not be doing all the work, their support is so incredibly important. So Micah and Emily, thank you so much for joining me on my podcast. Uh, why don't you introduce yourselves? Where are you? Where are you sitting? And uh, let's just start with that and then tell us a little bit about yourselves. So to start off, we are in my shop where I uh, tinker and create, as you mentioned, but it's also my garage. So there's a lot going on in this space. And so we're hiding some of it behind our lovely (laughs) blanket wall here. Uh, I'm a 32 year old dad who's been married for almost nine years. It'll be nine years this year, which seems way too far gone, too fast. Um, And yeah, I I like to disassemble and create and build. And uh, I enjoy that whole process in a a lot of different mediums. But the one that's become most prevalent for me has been leather. And I'm here with my lovely wife and partner who I will allow to introduce herself. Awesome. Thank you, Micah. Yeah. And I'm Emily, Micah's wife. I work full time at the church um, at Christ Memorial as a youth and family person. But I primarily am mom to our two fabulous little children who are five and seven. And I'm the one who helps keep Micah's dreams moving and yet also in check. Very true. Very true. (laughs) Wow. So tell me, tell me a little bit about that. The Swift Fox Leather Company. Um, Emily, I just want to pick up on what you said. Tell me, or maybe I should ask Micah, I, I'll just make this a free conversation. You can either one respond to this. How do you encourage his dreams and how do you keep them in check? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, well, encourage them when I, I, I try to give him the space to do his dreams. And I, I try to not stifle them. Like when he has a good idea and he's excited, I want him to go for it. And I'll say, let's get those materials. Let's figure that out. Um, and then check meaning he has a lot of ideas. He has a, a big lot dream. of ideas. <laughs> he was a big dreamer. So sometimes it's just a matter of helping him focus on the next steps for, for one, for one dream at a time. Yeah. Um, and not doing all of them at the same time. There's, there, there's lots of projects that, that come through my brain. Um, and the whiteboard has been a help at least to get things off my mind and onto the whiteboard right away. So I can go back and and refocus on, on what's at hand, but that's, it's definitely an ongoing issue for someone like myself who, who likes to do these things and, and make, and sometimes I don't have all the tools available immediately and I'll get partway through a project and realize there's just a part of this that that falls short of my idea and it goes on hold and and we wait until the time that that it's possible. But yeah, she's been 
uh, a great encourager. This this whole Swift Fox Leather Company wouldn't have happened without her encouragement um, to make it into to something that will hopefully eventually be a profitable endeavor. We both still work full time jobs, um, so managing the the time with family uh, and and a home run home operated uh, business can be challenging and limiting at times. But Emily does a fantastic job of giving. Uh, me that space um, to be out here in the garage and create and summer's coming up which is really nice because I have a good view of the front yard and our whole backyard is park so I can be out here all day long while the kids just run around uh, and get work done in the garage so summer is typically my time that I'm able to get out and get more done so it's been nice to have that. Yeah and, and being in Wisconsin uh, those summer months are just so precious aren't they? Uh, yeah. It's so much easier to do what you're doing with the door open than it is to uh, have to close it because of the snow. Um, there's a couple, there's so many things that you just said that I want to just pull out a little bit, like the whiteboard. Tell yeah. me about the whiteboard. Is that, was that Emily's idea? Was that your idea? Well, I work for Sub-Zero Refrigerator Company and they aren't always the best at managing their low value assets and so a lot of things get thrown away in the trash and i've been fortunate enough to walk by a lot of dumpsters in my time there and I just a small two foot by three foot whiteboard that i pulled out of the trash and carried home with me and and put up on some of the shelving that i have it just i have different areas where i'm working on whether it's in in wood or leather or shop organization, which is a big thing for me because I find my workspace getting cluttered just pushes me out of my workspace and not wanting to come back in and do the work. Um, so those ideas kind of go up there and I can prioritize them and they're a constant reminder of, of what's coming up, what has a deadline. Um, you know, it, it gives me an area to sit and look at and dream about ideas of how to make something happen. So it's been a great organizational tool to just be able to put those things down. I know a lot of people um, that might use uh, their computer a lot more will use, you know, sticky notes on their desktop, which is another great idea. I mean, for other tinkerers, mm -hmm. makers, and entrepreneur entrepreneurial people, getting those ideas written down so that you have the headspace to continue on to the next thing is, is a great help. And it's helpful yeah. for me because I can, instead of telling him that I need something created um i can just write it on his whiteboard and then he doesn't he won't forget and then i'll go find it. her and say hey what's this that i <laughs> made this about yeah <laughs> that's good you guys have found a system of uh, prioritization and organization that works mm -hmm. for you i i think that's so it seems granular but uh in terms of this conversation but i think it's so important because entrepreneurs sometimes in the productivity world we know we need to be more productive and more organized and we buy into someone else's system like we have to do this you got to get this day planner or whatever and then you feel stuck because it doesn't work with your personality or who you are so i love that you have found something that works for you and it can be as simple as pulling something out of a garbage heap putting it on the wall and making it work for you i i just think that's that's great now, I want to go back and ask this question. So you have tinkered with a lot of ideas. Uh, you have not only tinkered with a lot of ideas, you have actually pursued a lot of ideas. I'd love to hear um, Emily and you just kind of the fun journey you've been on in your nine years of marriage. I can't believe you guys have been married already nine years. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, the, some of the ideas that you've pursued, like, like I know the mushroom growing uh and the mushroom pursuit uh so anyway tell us some of these ideas that you've pursued so <laughs> I, she's got a pretty good list in her head yeah she does uh, yeah i have unique interests he has a lot he has pursued a lot of different things um some are just because they're interests of his and he's curious. So yeah. mushrooms, he, he loves foraging for mushrooms. And so when he pursues an interest, he just learns more about it. He, that's what he reads about. That's what he watches videos about. Yeah. Um, from that has come a Facebook group that he started that has, I don't know, 10,000 members. I, it, I think this September, the group will be four years old and we are at just over 15,000 yeah. members. Oh my with gosh. 
with any, you know, it's it's a really great group. Um, it's called Wisconsin Mushrooms. If you're watching this, and all of a sudden yeah. you're interested in in what foraging is like, um, and we've got some really great knowledgeable admins and moderators in the group that can help with identification. It's a really laid back group. We keep things mushroom related. We try to stay on topic and and not deal with any of the extra that social media brings. So he, yeah, he. He grew them in our house. He was growing different kinds of mushrooms. We go foraging for them at times. But really his niche in it all has been connecting people with the same interests. Um, and mm-hmm. so that has been really fun. He loves gardening. So he got his master, he got his master gardener yeah, certification. He took the University of Wisconsin Master Gardener program. And through that he's grown, he grows cacti. He is well equipped to help um, people with gardening stuff but that wasn't a career path he wanted to pursue necessarily no uh i mean he's what else so cacti mushrooms the leather woodworking board games they those are those are some of my like the like top five probably biggest interests i would say yeah. that's a good list of five for me you, he's you, wood carving and um, you've painted things but You've painted Painting. houses. You painted my l- old house living room area, and remember that. Um, that was a long time ago, too. That was a long time ago. You, what are, what about these little, these little uh, caricatures, the little army people, or the, the figures that you paint and created? That's that's part of the the board gaming hobby aspect. Is I do play some games that are are miniature war gaming. Uh, systems that have, you know, little tiny plastic army men essentially that cost uh-huh. way more than they should, but take hours upon hours to paint if you go into detail. And so um, that that intricate creative process is a good way for me to de-stress. Um, in 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 my view, those things that force me to focus extremely intensely re- are relaxing. Um, Mm -hmm. so i I take that time to sort of clear my mind and get into a little bit of that flow state where i'm working and sometimes it's a a cause of frustration because i'll be out in the garage working or inside painting and all of a sudden two three hours have gone by and it's time for dinner and the kids are going crazy um but but finding those hobbies where i can really intensely focus my attention Mm -hmm. um and and be in that world for that moment has been what are the most enjoyable to me. Yeah. And I've noticed that he's always, since we got married, wanted to work for himself at some point. His dream is to be his own boss. And he also needs a creative outlet. So he's tinkered in a lot of areas that are good hobbies, but leather was the first one that came up where we saw potential in him being able to make that his own business on his own at some point. The rest didn't have a lot of, they're good hobbies, but not a good income potential. Right. They cost a lot more than they have the potential to bring in. So. So I was going to ask what, how did you land on the leather making um, as a, as a point of actually, okay, let's pursue this and see if we can make a living doing this. Why that, why that particular uh, focus? So I don't remember the exact thing that triggered my interest or desire to do this. It was probably just my wallet falling apart repeatedly. Mm. Um, I would buy department store wallets here and there that say genuine leather on them. And I'd use them for 12 or 18 months. And then the pockets start tearing out. The seams are ripping. Like this one that I just had to order a new one that I, I what I should have done is I shouldn't have ordered the new one. I should have called Micah yeah. at Swift yeah. Fox Leather Company. Had you make me one? If you have something that you like a particular design or layout or holding capacity, those are definitely things that can be integrated into a, a remake or a new design. And so I ordered, you know, a couple square feet of leather, uh, a couple punches, and some some heavy duty um, thread and found a pattern online and and made myself my first wallet, which I've got to find. I think I gave it to one of the kids somewhere because as my skills developed, I wanted to make myself a a nicer wallet. 
And so we got a little bit more and, and it kind of took off from there. I created that wallet and saw a whole potential for creating things that are useful in my life, whether it be a bag or a pouch for something, uh, an organizer for some pens, uh, started out, you know, small, small ideas like that. And eventually I started looking around and learning a lot more uh, and decided that, you know, this currently is just a hobby that if I want to get into in a serious way um, and create really nice things, is going to have a good amount of upfront expense. As Emily mentioned, I do eventually want to be my full-time uh, self-employed boss uh, along with the partner boss next to me here. Yeah, that's right. And and that that was something that after creating a few things, I really enjoyed the process uh, and started to create some of my own patterns and things and, and work out from there and, and started an Etsy shop uh, and sold a few things at work. One of the more frequent things that I've been selling is this guy right here, which is just a badge ID holder on a swivel, but all, you know, 700 people or whatever it is at my workplace have to wear their badge. And some people don't like the little retractable plastic clip that you're given when you start. And so yeah. those have been uh, a real nice starter for selling a bunch of those and a couple belts to get my hands on some of the, the better, nicer or different tools that I needed to continue down the road of becoming uh, someone who's selling things for profit. So there's, there's a couple things there. One is you saw gaps you you notice gaps or not quality made products that you wanted for yourself and you said i can do this now Absolutely. i couldn't do this <laughs> god didn't wire me that way but you can and so you started doing it so the dream can actually get sparked with looking at other products and going hey i could do a better job of this than that right and they're okay. useful Go ahead. You were going to say something. Yeah. Well, something about what you had said where, where you're doubting your ability uh, to accomplish something is a dangerous territory to be in because mm. beginning leatherworking or any sort of hobby or interest or business where you're creating something and there's going to be a steep initial learning curve. And that first one or two something that you make, you might get lucky and, and have a skill set from some other area in your life that kind of carries over into this, but those first couple items for a lot of people do not turn out looking like something you would want to carry every day or, or show off. Now you can take pride in that because it's something you created. Um, but I want to encourage you that if you make a couple things and you feel like you don't qualify or your skill set's just not there, it's just not there yet. You can mm -hmm. definitely develop it and learn YouTube is a great starting point. Uh, there's a lot of people who do things as in, in the world of leather for teaching and any other craft. Um, so I recommend that as a resource for learning and continuing down that path. Sure. Micah spends more hours learning about his interests before he does anything. Like before he starts doing anything, he has spent hours and hours and hours mm -hmm. scouring the internet and videos and learning everything he can about it before he. And then, and then he jumps in and he tries it. And so um, leather was never something before a year ago when the pandemic hit that we'd ever considered being in yeah. our garage. Yeah, about six, 16 months ago when it started yeah. was, I, I was laid off work for seven weeks in the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic in, in 2020. Um, and that was when the, the wallet thing started. But uh, <laughs> quickly over that time with a lot of, free time and space to do things i was able to put a lot of time in working in this garage and developing that skill set um and and improving my craft which was was a great opportunity because had i not been forced off of work for seven weeks which by the way i figured it out was the longest time since i was 14 years old um that i haven't been working that's the most time off um Without that, I would have probably never taken the time to develop this this into what it has become. So sometimes, so, that, so sometimes a dream can get sparked and actually start taking steps towards it in a 
uncomfortable space or a painful place, you know, where you're let go or for, you weren't let go, but you didn't work for seven weeks. Some people discover their dream when they are fired, you know, yeah. or they're, they're released from their job and they're like, what do I do now? Um, so you've, and the other thing is really interesting about your story is you didn't, you didn't quit sub zero and no. go full in with Swift Fox leather company. Uh, although some people do that and that's the way that they need to do it. Right. And that's fine. But for you, you're, you're showing people that you can actually do a side hustle. You can actually do these things and incrementally improve, get the MVP. We talk about this in the dream accelerator a lot and get that minimally viable product out in the market and test it and see if it gets some sales, if it gets some interest, right? And then improve on it, improve on it. But you're you're putting stuff out there all the time. Well, that's that's been a great benefit was to maintain uh, my and, and Emily maintaining her full-time jobs. It might be harder on the schedule, but uh, the financial security and stability that that offers to get started and not feel like my entire family's well-being is dependent on this working mm -hmm. out because that puts me in a desperate situation. And from my past and my history, I know in desperation, uh, I don't make the best choices long-term. I see right out in front of me, but not much past that. So being able to be in a more comfortable space uh, regarding our financial situation has allowed us to take more risk, I would say, um, mm -hmm. as far as investing in this than I would have been comfortable with had I just jumped into it. I would have felt a whole lot greater need to make a whole bunch of money back real fast so that I can pay for our living expenses and improve the business. Whereas maintaining our full-time jobs, we sacrifice time, but we gain that financial independence through being able to grow the business more comfortably. That, that's such a keen insight, Micah. Thank you for that. I also, I want the audience to know, because I know you guys really well, I'd like the audience to know how you're doing, what's the impact of doing this on your family and especially on the two, the two kids on Ollie and, uh, and Lizzie, what, what's the impact on them as they're watching you make these leather products? I think our kids have kind of watched me make and fix and create things their whole life, which um, I'm thankful that I was, is, was raised in, a family where being creative and expressive was, was not hindered. Um, I can remember taking apart VCRs and, and other electronics and stuff when I was a kid, VCRs, you know, yeah. But some of your viewers, <laughs> I don't know. VCR. Um, so that, that's been something that I'm grateful to have the opportunity to teach my kids is just the, the willingness to take the time to fix something or make something quality or repair something. Because um, like most of the furniture in our house is either second hand or or cheap particle board stuff. But there's there's a couple of really nice pieces that we've either gotten that were, you know, something my grandfather, who was a woodworker, made or a bench or a table that I'm working on um, that I hope will last, you know, generations and be fixable and be handed down. Uh, we're slowly trying to replace things in our life with more useful, more permanent solutions to uh, everyday things in life so that we don't have future expenses and we can put a little bit more work and maybe a small amount of money more than buying something cheap now and have that that item that's going to be you know in our family for a while and and I appreciate the the sentiment that comes along with that but also just the functionality of a durable piece that mm. I don't have to replace uh, and that's kind of how I design where I come at my leather goods from is I want something that this person's going to enjoy, you know, in 40 years can still show it to their kids and it still works. Or, you know, if, if something happens where 20 years later, uh, a stitching stitching has been rubbed loose and frayed, it can be fixed quite easily and doesn't have to go in the bin and be replaced like the department store wallets do. So dreams. Kids, go ahead, Emily. Go ahead. I was going to say, but the kids, I think the impact on them has been actually more time with their dad, um, which you wouldn't think when someone's starting a business, right? But right. they are out here in his shop with him 
every second he's home. So he has set up a, like, he has a TV on the wall. They'll watch a cartoon while he's sewing something or they'll mm-hmm. sand something with them. But especially our daughter's very favorite place to be is sitting in a chair right next to her daddy's workbench with him. And so um, they talk all the time now more than I've ever remembered um, because they just, they found their space in his shop with him. Um, and that's been really, really fun. And they're so proud of him too. That's awesome. I, I definitely got off track on answering your question. No, um, no, you did really, good. That's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would agree. It's been nice to be able to, I have a, a really high, uh, workbench so I can work standing. You can see it's at head level here sitting down. Uh, so I have a really high chair and yeah, I'll give the kids, I'll punch some holes in some scrap pieces of leather and they can sew them together or they can use a hammer and some of my letters and, and put, you know, their initials or name and some leather. Uh, it's, it's given us an opportunity to bond over, um, my work. And, and that's been really great that it's not something that puts distance between myself and my family. It's something that we can all kind of uh, enjoy together. Mm-hmm. I also have, I, I do want to say having the shop at home is great. Space is a limiting factor. Having tools for woodworking also presents another shop challenge. And for, for any makers who are working in a space with power tools, I just want to, as a reminder, say, be conscientious mm-hmm. about safety, especially with kids around. I have safety keys for all my larger power tools. They're they're usually unplugged when they're not in use. The kids aren't in when they're not in use, um, or those safety keys are are out, so they're inoperable. Um, that's a big thing for me. Is is I love having the kids in this space, but keeping them safe um, and educated is priority number one. So this has presented a really big opportunity as far as safety and education for them too, um, with sharp instruments, um, presses, hammers, saws, and, and other small or large power tools that are just in this area. That's really a good word. Dreams a lot of times come out of um, um, a desire to solve a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me, tell our audience, what is the problem that Swift Leather Company Swift Fox Leather Company is solving? Uh, Goods that break down quickly. Um, And custom one-on-one interaction where we can personalize something to your needs. So when you go to Kohl's or Coach or wherever else that you're buying your your bag, your wallet, your belt from, um, you're not going to get it fit to your person. It's not going to be a bespoke item where if you want this number of pockets or to hold this certain pen, we can work with you to, to make that happen so that your piece is custom to you. It's exactly what you need and want and is going to be functional for hopefully a lifetime. All the things that I, that I make and sell out of leather, I offer a lifetime guarantee on the craftsmanship and the leather. So if something should happen, a tear rip, a rivet come loose, stitching come loose. All you got to do is send it back. We'll repair it and send it back to you. Um, so I, I want that guarantee to, to never be needed. I want to create those products so that I don't get anything back. And if I am, that's showing there's, there's an issue with either the way something was designed and it needs to be reworked um, or the materials or potentially the craftsmanship. And so it might be my skills that need to adapt and learn through that process. Fortunately, I haven't had that happen yet. I had one guy who bought a belt and then gave me the wrong size or something and <laughs> sent it back and I had to make him a new everybody one. Who's, everybody who's watching this, that's me. <laughs> I should go get the belt. It's, it's awesome. Uh, I love it. I can't wait to get more um, products uh, from you, Micah. So thanks for... Thanks for backing your guarantee and getting me a bite to help. <laughs> Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times in the dream pursuit, there is a there's a hesitancy that needs to be overcome. There's a there's some way that fear is showing up. It's showing up either in self-doubt or distraction or discouragement. Um, sometimes despair creeps in because you've tried other things and they haven't worked. Um, talk to me and Emily jump in here too, because uh, I'm certain that you've had some of this show up in your, your life too, as you watched him find yeah. his way to this space um, yeah. and to pursue this particular 
part of his dream with the Swift Fox Leather Company. What kind of fears have you dealt with? And that, you know, the podcast is named Move Forward Anyway, because I, I really believe that we don't overcome fear. We don't eliminate fear. Fear is a human reality that's a renewable resource that we can use as fuel. So let's bring it along with us, move forward anyway, in spite of it. Tell me about some of the fears that you've experienced through the years. I'll, I'll definitely let Emily go because her her not me perspective um, is a lot clearer than mine on this. Yeah. Uh, I think that my fears all along this time we've been married have been um, the fear of him not, not settling into something. And so it's taken a lot of experimenting for him to settle into something. And I've had to, I've had to move through that fear of, is he just going to keep wandering in his pursuits of what he wants to do? And so, but I, I've mm -hmm. still tried to give him the space to do that. And he has landed somewhere but I see his fear come out in not wanting to showcase or push his products and the things he can make as much. So um, I'll mm -hmm. say that needs to go on your site. We need to get that made. And then he'll have doubt in the quality of the product or if somebody's going to want it or if it mm -hmm. looks right, or if it's, he's a perfectionist by nature. And so then I'll have to convince him, no, 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 that's something we need to put out there. Um, cause it, because it is good or the idea we've recently been started just initial conversations about maybe selling his goods in town at some places. And so I know he has a fear of maybe, I mean, I'm assuming, Go like, are they going to be, are people going to buy them? Are they going to be good enough for people? Yep. Um, yep. so there's that fear of it, of is it the right product and are people going to want it and like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think my, my fears that I've had to push through the, the biggest of which for me have been the legal and licensing and uh, taxes and, and the business, the, the deep business aspect of it. Cause I can create goods all day long and, and really enjoy the process and the things that I enjoy are going to be the things that aren't that difficult to do as far as getting out there and doing the work. But yeah, getting on the computer and trying to find the people and asking the right questions so that you're you're doing your your licensing and your payments and everything in the right time and in the right amounts. Um, if you have access to and the the financial ability to hire someone um, to to work with you on that, it's going to be a lot easier for you. So if that's the challenging. Uh, thing for you. Being on the other side of some of this, I would recommend reaching out to one of those companies that can help you uh, either incorporate or form that LLC um, and get things straight for you on the, you know, sales and use tax, your, your licensing um, and, and the financial side of the business to get you started and give yourself more headspace to work on the products and develop the, the business from a functional standpoint. Um, will put you a little bit further ahead of where I am now. I decided to struggle through all of that on my own because uh, I'm frugal about some things and and not others and and paying people for exper expertise and experience that I can potentially gain on my own with a lot of research and time is usually right. one area where I put myself through the torture of learning uh, in order to be able to save that money. Um, but if you have the ability and you're willing to to go the route of paying a company to like legal zoom i know is is one of them there's many out there uh, but that type of organization can can really benefit someone getting started out that was that was my biggest hurdle in all of this for sure yeah, yeah. and the just the uncertainty of the uncertainty of doing it right yeah you know and not costing yourself more hassle down the road because you didn't do it right don't uh, worry i've I, i've overpaid taxes on purpose just to make sure i i wasn't gonna get uh get knocked on anything before i really knew 100 percent everything i just wanted to make sure and so it wasn't a lot but yeah i that's definitely an area where you don't want to have complications at all i think another area of fear has been 
maybe it's not fear, um, another obstacle, but it could be fear, is when I like ask you to make a product that isn't on your radar as something you would use or know or want or want to make on your own. Sure. Like, like the little clutches that we're making, right? That was a new idea that you wouldn't necessarily have come up with on your own to make. And so then it's getting your head wrapped around a new style or a, or a product that, that you personally wouldn't use or need on oh, yeah. yourself. No, it's absolutely been beneficial to have a, a partner with a female perspective on uh, products and, and design and, and development too absolutely that's an area where i clearly uh lack and fall short is is the female perspective and desire for products that might be useful in in their everyday life that's not to say that some of the things that i come up with on my own aren't functional for for everyone or anyone um but that's that's been been helpful uh for sure yeah so how do you how when you when those fears arise or the obstacles come up how do you ultimately get to a place to move forward anyway what what are some of the yeah so you rely on emily to really encourage you and to push you yeah um i, I don't want to say rely but i that's why having a, a partnership um with my wife is is really great because um in our whole marriage i feel like we both sort of complemented each other uh mm -hmm. in a lot of ways where we we might be lacking or or need to grow and so having a partner who can be that from the, the business perspective and, and push the things that I don't want to focus on because I want to be doing something else um, is the biggest way that I'm able to. Uh, and she is, uh, from my perspective, wanting to encourage me in, in our life and, and grow the business and, and help me maintain that. And so hers is, I want to help Micah succeed. I want this business to do well. And, you know, this is something that maybe needs to get done um, or she'll be, you know, my, my reminder on something, um, which has been really helpful. Awesome. And I think my fears, how do I push forward with those? Uh, faith, trusting that, that, that God's got that for us. Mm -hmm. um, but also being willing to step back and let go his dreams are his dreams and I don't have to worry about the future of his dreams because he's the one working through that I can come along next to him with his dreams yeah. um but the, it's not mine to own and so there's freedom and letting go of results and just letting a journey happen too how do you let go how do you get yourself to a place to let go it's not always easy and there's a lot of talk in my head that I've learned about that and that there's um pursuing my own interests is really important so that I can let go and being we are we are learning every day how to communicate better so when I'm feeling fear or uh, overwhelmed or that I need more time with him or whatever that is the more we talk about that and understand each other the easier it is yeah the communicating needs in a relationship always extremely important and and beneficial for both parties um so have being a, it, the business has helped us grow i think in our personal relationship because you know if we have to have a conversation about something regarding split fox we're also probably having conversations regarding our everyday life and so um having more means for being forced to communicate um because we have alternate schedules where she works primarily during the day and I work second shift. So um, we're during the week sort of missing each other uh, and seeing each other briefly for a large part of the day. And then on weekends, we sort of come together and all those work week, hectic, busy everyday things uh, might kind of fall back or be forgotten about. So having those, you know, midweek conversations at that time to, uh, communicate has been really helpful in regards to growing the business as well as improving our relationship and our communication. In one of our uh, recent Dream Accelerator sessions, someone uh, pursuing their dream is struggling a bit to find the name, to name their business, to name their, their, um, their venture. 
And uh, I love the name Swift Fox Leather Company. Tell me where that came from as he picks up his mug yeah. and drinks out know. of the Swift Fox mug. <laughs> Good timing, my <laughs> This is new information even for me because he just came to me one day with the name. Okay. okay. Where'd it come from? <laughs> well, there is actually a reason behind it. As a kid, I was trying to think, when have I experienced leather? Like, what was the first memory or thought of experiencing something made out of leather? Now, I don't remember what age I was, but at some point, my parents decided um, that me and my two brothers had earned the responsibility of a dog and his name was Bruno. And we got him from a, a pumpkin patch uh, near Sheboygan, Wisconsin, where I grew up. And he was a smooth Fox Terrier, smooth, not swift. Okay. So okay. the collar that we got him, got him with was a leather and brass collar. And that is my earliest memory of anything leather that I could ever think of. I mean, my, my dad probably had a couple items or a briefcase that was made out of one, but that was like our childhood dog. And so I wanted to start out this business as something simple to get some products out there, um, test my desire and ability to pursue this as a business. So I started with initially making leather dog collars as kind of a, a tribute to my childhood dog, Bruno. Um, and this is, is almost like a replica of the one that he had. It's a little bit lighter in color, um, but that is the reason for the name. And, and Swift Fox, um, I wanted, I've always been enamored with foxes. Um, and our son, when he was born, we designed his nursery and themed it kind of around foxes and forest. So Swift Fox and my Smooth Fox Terrier dog as a child, Bruno, uh, and that earliest memory of something leather that was memorable um, is, is how the name came up. So it, it, there, there is some sentimental value and it's kind yeah. of a interconnected backstory to make it but that's why this was the first product that i made and that's why the name that is really cool i um was just working through one of the exercises with our dream accelerator to try to help people clarify their dream and one of the things i do is i help them go back to the genesis of their dream like where did it start and um you know what was the kind of the the moment that that sparked it for them. And I love how in your story, you went back to the first experience that you had with leather. Mm -hmm. And from that, not only do you get clarity about where to, where, what kind of gifts to make or uh, products to make, but you found the name of yeah. the business. I think that is just so awesome. Um, that, that is really cool. So show us some of your, you've got some stuff laying up there. Just, you showed us the dog collar, show us some other things that you've made. So uh, another thing too about that collar is I never remember ever having to replace it. And I think one of my brothers uh, still has it to this day, like as a memory of him. Um, so there's, there's wallets. This, this is my, my everyday carry wallet that has a couple pockets on the outside, which is really nice and handy. And then just four more pockets, deep pocket for cash and cards. Uh, that's my everyday. It's nice and thin. I really like it. We've got, I'll just turn this a little bit so we can see a little easier. There you go. Awesome. Okay. Another wallet, same design. You can kind of see a little bit better about it. Yeah. And, and these are things that, you know, they're, they're all hand stitched. I don't use a sewing machine on everything. So I punch all these holes and, and saddle stitch this, which makes it easy to repair, highly durable. Um, and I, love your, I love your logo. Your mark is really cool. Thank you. Um, some, some personal items that I've made that I have really enjoyed are, are these hats. I think that's great. So I, I, I made my dad a matching one for, for Christmas that matches this one here. Yeah. Um, you know, 
I've been using this leather bag every day for a year and I've never had a bag hold up as nice as this one has. I, I know that's me speaking about the things that I make. I've never owned a leather bag before, um, but I use it for work, throw it in and out of my car, or up on the shelf, all over the place every day, and I have not had a single issue with it. There's so many pockets. There are. There's lots of pockets. There's so many pockets. I'm like, dang, that's great. Zipper down area. It holds a 15-inch laptop. So this is something that I do need to get listed on my Etsy shop. Um, and for, for people who might be interested in a larger item like this, this is entirely customizable from the, the bag leather itself and type to the strap color, if you want contrasting or not. So people need to, to know that we, we can work with you and create exactly what you want or need. We're, we can size belts and collars. Uh, to your specific needs. My can... sister just asked for a a leash for their little puppy that had two handles on it so that it could be, they could hold the puppy closer to them or further away. So, but they, my favorite is when he adds liners to things because he can add a little bit of color or personal touch like this wallet has just a little bit of a fun inside to it. That's where I come in. Yeah, that's really <laughs> cool. I love it. You know, and and just small, handy, everyday items, zipper clothes. We need to get, we need to get you and Allie, my daughter, connected for uh, Sage, her dog, getting her a leash. That'd be cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, um, he can personalize things. Show us, show us the, uh, show us the picnic table you just created. Well, what do you mean, <laughs> picnic table? How am I going to show you that? Those are huge. No, that little guy. This is a picnic table for. <laughs> to put onto a tree so the squirrels can sit and have a lunch. And I'm assuming some kind of feeder is going to go on that screw on the so top. That's, yeah. That's for you, you corn spread cob spread on the dry corn cob. And then you just get to enjoy oh, watching the squirrel have a picnic. So that's not leather, but it's man, not. I think uh, everybody should have one of those on their trees. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Um yeah. You guys, this has been so delightful. Uh, thank you for letting me into your garage and telling us a little bit about the story. Um, I want to ask you um, one more question, and then I'm going to give you a chance to tell people how they can get a hold of you and find out more about what you can do for them in terms of making them uh, the coolest leather products around. Um, the question is, what would you like to say, and I want each of you to speak to this, what would you like to say to someone who is considering their dream is um, hesitant, resistant to go for it, but knows that they could, they could do something significant with their dream and maybe even make a living off of doing it. What would you say to them? I would say if you can try it out for yourself, if it's, if it's a craft or an area where you can, Pursue it in a smaller scale, not to the level that you want, to get your feet wet and make sure it's the right thing for you. As Emily suggested earlier, I am a person who has tried and gone through a lot of different hobbies um, just in the almost nine years that we've been married. And it's taken me like seven of those years to finally kind of get a foothold into something I would be comfortable with turning into my job permanently. Mm -hmm. So not investing too much until you're pretty sure it's what you want to do would be my recommendation. Now, that being said, don't be afraid to jump in and continue when you hit those bumps. Um, I don't use that first wallet that I made for a reason. It wasn't the best. I mean, <laughs> it was probably going to last mm -hmm. longer than any I could buy in most stores but it wasn't what I wanted in the end. And so I had to continue developing my skills and putting in the work to get to a point where it was something I was proud and happy to carry every day. Yeah. Um, if you can learn from others experience and expertise, absolutely do that. Don't feel like you're in this alone. You might not know the person you're learning from, but use those online resources that are accessible today to so learn many resources available yeah. to us today and and free i mean there's plenty out there you can pay for 
Um, but if you're just trying to find your way or trying to get that initial start to, to get through the door of creating that business, do it. Yeah. Just start small and don't throw your life savings at it until it's a sure thing that you are willing to work at and work at and work at and then work at more. And don't be um, afraid to ask for and receive help Yeah. and ask for and receive expertise that help you fill gaps or holes where you could learn about it. Like Micah, he learns about everything, but that's not really where he wants to learn and right. wants to grow. So bring the people in sooner rather than later to help you. I, I love that advice. That's awesome. My advice would be to make sure you enjoy it. Um, Micah is really happy when he's creating leather stuff. I mean, he might have be frustrated yeah. about something here or there, but yep. his demeanor is, is just happy and, and in that sweet spot. So don't pursue something that that you don't even like doing. I mean, just because of, you think it could be something later, like you don't want to spend your life doing something you hate doing. Um, but also with that, ask, find that person to be your other perspective, your encourager, your other set of eyes, your person who can see outside the box of, of the place you've put yourself and ask that person to be your partner in it. I love it. Great, great uh, conversation today. Thank you so much for blessing me with it and blessing my audience with it. I hope that those of you who are listening have felt encouraged and are thinking about how you're going to move forward anyway, based on what you've heard uh, from Mike and Emily's story. Um, in closing, you guys, how can people find out more about and get access to your products and contact you at the Swift Fox Leather Company? Yeah. So on Instagram, we are Swift Fox Leather, one word, no underscore. Uh, Etsy shop, if you search one word, Swift Fox Leather Co., that will take you to our shop. Uh, you should see the little fox icon. And on Facebook, we are the Swift Fox Leather Company. So if you throw in the Swift Fox Leather Company into Google, um, it should take you to all those results and pages. We'd be happy to message uh, with, with anyone who has needs or is interested in, in having something created for them. If you don't see something listed on Etsy um, or on the Facebook page, uh, just chat to us about it and we'll let you know and we can... Yeah. I mean, some of, some of your best products have been somebody suggesting something that you haven't created yet. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Emily, did you have something you wanted to say? Look like you were no, ready. To say that, that, that not all of his products are on all those pages. So if you're like, I need a new, I need a new bag. That's the size. He, we're so happy to work with people and to get their ideas and to make something that they want. So custom work is is probably more of what he does than yeah. mass product stuff. yeah good I like, I like making those individual pieces and and getting those out there so someone feels like they have something unique to themselves um yeah thank you jeff for for yeah, having us you. here to talk with you and and talk with your listeners yeah, i really appreciate thank you that very much. uh and i hope that that your success can continue and and we can both continue to move forward anyway, regardless of those bumps in the road. So thanks. I love for it. That's right. That's why we're doing it. Thank yeah. you so much for those kind words. And uh, we'll have to do this again in a couple of years or even maybe yeah. before that and just see the progress you've made. Um, so great. So thank you guys so much. Have an awesome day. You too. Right, you too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hey, fellow dreamer. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Head over to my website, jeffmeyer.org, for all of the show notes and links. And when you're ready to move from overthinking about your dream to actually taking action on it, consider joining the Dream Accelerator community. Our clients are getting crystal clear on their dream with our Dream Generator Vivid Description 5-Step Process. They're discovering the truth about fear and how to use it as fuel to take courageous steps in the right direction. And most importantly, they are walking a clear path forward because they have made an investment in themselves to confidently realize their dreams. The results are so inspiring. Having coaching and companions on the dream journey is crucial. Remember, fear will come, fear will stay. 
move forward anyway.